The Hinterkaifeck Murders. In a remote farmstead near the tiny Bavarian hamlet of Hinterkaifeck, something was amiss. The farmer Andreas Gruber had spoken to neighbors about strange occurrences, footsteps in the snow leading to the house, but not away unexplained creaks in the attic and a set of keys gone missing. On April 4th, 1922, the worst fears were realized. The Gruber family, along with their new maid, were found brutally murdered. The police arrived to a chilling scene. All six family members, including two children, were slaughtered with a mattock, a tool similar to a pickaxe. The murders were committed in such a way that led investigators to believe that the assailant was familiar with the anatomy of the human body. To add to the horror, evidence suggested that the perpetrator had stayed at the farm for days after the murders, feeding the livestock and eating meals in the kitchen. Despite rigorous investigations and hundreds of interviews, the murders remain unsolved to this day. The events surrounding the Hinterkaifeck murders have fueled countless theories, ranging from robbery gone wrong to familial conflict. Yet no one has ever been charged. The Dyatlov Pass Incident In January 1959, nine young Soviet hikers set out to trek through the Ural Mountains. Led by Igor Dyatlov, their goal was to reach the Oterton Mountain. They never made it. Weeks after failing to return, a search party discovered their tent, ripped open from the inside. Scattered around were the hikers' bodies in various stages of undress, despite sub-zero temperatures. The strangest part? Autopsies could not provide a conclusive cause of death. Although some bodies had injuries, including skull fractures and a chest crushed with force comparable to a car crash, there were no signs of struggle. Even more bizarrely, one of the bodies had trace amounts of radiation. Despite exhaustive investigations, no one could determine what actually happened. Today, theories abound, ranging from military experiments gone wrong to the more outlandish claims of extraterrestrial encounters. But despite all the speculation, the incident remains an unsolved mystery, haunting both experts and amateur sleuths. The Lizzie Borden Case an unsolved enigma of family tragedy. On a hot summer morning of August 4, 1892, the peaceful community of Fall River, Massachusetts, was thrown into a state of horror and bewilderment. Andrew and Abby Borden, respected members of the community, were found brutally murdered in their home. The primary suspect, their youngest daughter, Lizzie Borden, the crime scene was nothing short of gruesome. Andrew Borden was discovered on a sofa in the sitting room, his face nearly cleaved in two from multiple hatchet blows. Upstairs, Abby Borden lay on the floor of a guest room, similarly attacked. Yet despite the brutal nature of the crime, there was a striking lack of evidence. No bloody clothing, no murder weapon. Just a house eerily undisturbed except for the lifeless bodies. Lizzie, who was at home when the murders occurred, became the focal point of the investigation. Her behavior following the discovery of the bodies raised suspicions. She provided inconsistent statements and seemed strangely unemotional during her inquest. Adding to the intrigue, Lizzie was found burning a dress days after the murders, which she claimed was stained with paint. Public opinion was divided. On one side, People couldn't fathom that a young woman of Lizzie's social standing could commit such a horrific act. On the other, Lizzie had motives. She stood to gain financially from her parents' deaths and had recently had a falling out with Abby. Then there was the question of opportunity. Lizzie claimed she was in the barn during the time of Abby's murder and came back to find her father dead. But the timeline was tight, almost too tight for her to commit both murders and clean up. Lizzie was charged and stood trial in what would become one of America's most sensational cases. Yet, the prosecution faced an uphill battle. They had no murder weapon, though a hatchet was found in the basement, it was clean. There were no eyewitnesses, and forensic evidence was virtually non-existent by today's standards. Most significantly, there was no bloody clothing linking Lizzie to the scene. After a trial filled with dramatic moments, Lizzie was acquitted. Public reaction was mixed. Some saw it as a triumph of justice, 
while others felt a murderess had gone free. The aftermath left more questions than answers. If Lizzie didn't commit the crime, who did? Some theories suggested that the Borden's Irish maid, Bridget Sullivan, could be the perpetrator or an accomplice. Other theories proposed that Lizzie might have had an accomplice, perhaps even her older sister, Emma. Yet no other suspects were seriously considered and no one else was charged. Today, the Borden house is a bed and breakfast where the truly brave can stay in the rooms where the murders occurred. Despite the passage of time, the case continues to capture public imagination, inspiring books, films, and even a recent television series. No definitive evidence has been found to prove Lizzie's guilt or innocence conclusively. The Lizzie Borden case remains an unsolved enigma, a chilling tale of family, wealth, and mystery that leaves us questioning the depths of human nature. Was Lizzie a cold-blooded killer or a misunderstood victim of her time? Over a century later, we are still no closer to knowing the truth, making the story of Lizzie Borden an enduring puzzle that continues to haunt the American psyche. The Cursed Chair of Thomas Busby, A Legacy of Death the tale of Busby's stoop chair is one of those eerie stories that straddles the line between legend and documented history. Known alternatively as the dead man's chair, this cursed object has been linked to a series of tragic and unexplained deaths, its story rooted in the late 17th century in North Yorkshire, England. The chair belonged to Thomas Busby, a notorious drunkard and criminal who lived near the town of Thirsk. He married Elizabeth Audy, the daughter of a small-time counterfeiter named Daniel Audy. The pair went into business together, but their alliance soured due to Busby's volatile behavior. Legend has it that one evening, after consuming his usual excessive amounts of alcohol, Busby returned home to find Audie sitting in his favorite chair. A violent argument ensued, culminating in Busby throwing Audie out of his house. Blinded by rage, Busby later broke into Audie's home and killed him, hanging his body on a hook to ensure the crime was discovered. When the body was found, Busby was quickly arrested, tried, and sentenced to death by hanging. As he was led to the gallows, which were ironically situated near a signpost called Busby's Stoop, he was granted a final request. Busby chose to have a drink at his favorite tavern. After downing his ale, he allegedly declared, May sudden death come to anyone who dares sit in my chair. From that point, the chair seemed to claim life after life, becoming a local legend. During World War II, airmen from a nearby base frequented the pub where the chair resided. Those who were bold enough to sit in it reportedly never returned from their missions. In the late 1960s, two Royal Air Force pilots sat in the chair, only to crash their truck into a tree just after leaving the bar. In 1970, a bricklayer decided to tempt fate by sitting in the chair. He died that afternoon, falling into a hole at his work site. By 1978, the owner of the pub, Tony Earnshaw, had had enough. Alarmed by the number of deaths connected to the chair, he donated it to the Thirsk Museum, where it was promptly hung from the ceiling to prevent anyone from sitting on it again. Skeptics may dismiss these occurrences as mere coincidences or products of self-fulfilling prophecies. Yet, the string of tragedies connected to Busby's stoop chair is hard to ignore. Whether influenced by the chair's dark history, or perhaps some inexplicable malevolent force, those who have dared to sit in it have paid the ultimate price. To this day, the chair remains suspended, far from anyone who might inadvertently test Busby's grim curse. While no one can definitively prove the chair's malevolent power, the legend endures, a chilling testament to the darkness that contained even the most ordinary of objects. If you like these stories, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the right, smash the bell button on the channel to get notified of new upcoming videos, and make sure you like this video. Do it, or face the consequences.